Seal is going to be our first speaker. He's Director General of the International Institute for Families Research. He's from Spain, but he's based in New York. Ignacio. Good morning to everyone, and thank you very much to the organizers for inviting me to speak here today. I work for the International Federation for Family Development, which is a non-governmental, independent, and non-profit federation with the primary mission to support families through training in 68 countries of the five continents. We have more than 250 family enrichment centers with more than 8,000 volunteers across the world. And we have a very special status at the United Nations ECOSOC, a status that is given only to 3% of organizations working there. Taking into account all this broad experience of our federation, I have today some bad news and good news to tell you. Of course, bad news is that violence exists, and it exists everywhere in the world and in many, many different ways. But there are also good, good news, and the good news is that it can be prevented, addressed, it can be lessened, it can be eradicated, at least to a great extent, if we understand that families are the environment where it can start or it can not start. We can find ways for family to teach that violence is never the way. The level of violent family dysfunction reported by global agencies worldwide suggests this need to address families as a whole, to restore secure attachments, functional relationships, and family and community resilience. Researchers worldwide are also recognizing an important connection between individual, family, and community factors. We can see today this individualistic approach that tries to solve everything for each single women and men but we also see that it doesn't. We all need care from others, especially as children, especially as ill people or as elder people. And if we get this care within the family, if we forget that individualistic approach and we focus on as I said, making family links much more secure, then it's much easier to avoid violence. And I'm going to say something maybe a bit controversial, but I think if you think about it, I hope you will agree with me. There is no such a thing as family violence. There can be domestic violence, violence in the household, maybe pre-family violence when there is not really a family constituted, or even sometimes post-family violence. What I'm trying to say is that family is basically about loving each one. If you, if you see it here, 
uh, violence usually arises where familiar ties never really existed or were real in the past, but not anymore. Because family is about care. And when there is care, there can't be violence. From here, to restore family, the first point is to break violence. And to break violence by breaking the silence, as the title of this panel says. Create a conducive environment to strengthen and support all families. Uh, thanks in part to our work, the United Nations General Assembly has talked about this, to create a conducive environment to strengthen and support all families in the world. We are advocating in legislation for family perspective, which means giving preference, giving help to families. Pope Francis has said that the culture of abuse and cover-up is incompatible with the logic of the gospel. Wherever there is violence, wherever we even suspect there is violence, we have to realize two things. There is no family and we need to do something about it. There are many theories on how to do it, but I just want to focus, to finish, in very simple points. If there are stable and solid bones, we can respect families, of course. When there are situations of vulnerability, families need support. But when they fail or there are broken links, there should be intervention from the state. And we have just finished this global project on families and sustainable development goals together with the United Nations and UNICEF. And I can't explain it now, maybe I, I will be able to later, but we need to address the full range of interpersonal violence to reduce those evident stressors. We can see that they are common in all five, five continents. And also, I wanted to mention that poverty, which is usually seen as one of the main predictors of violence is not necessarily so. There is no much evidence about it. So even if there is poverty, while we try to solve it, we can prevent violence. Family, where life begins and love never ends, that's my main message to break up the silence around violence. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. My focus is always amongst young people, who, by the way, it has never changed, even though it was my first experience of a relationship. Young people today are experiencing first-term relationships and don't understand when it's toxic or when he's too into you. Tell me a little bit about the, your work, particularly with the UN, in relation to young people. Well, yes, we, we have done this study with UNICEF, Okay, and in this study we insist that there should be three levels of prevention. One done by lawmakers, mm -hmm. which is basically trying to put commitment back in its place in legislation. Okay. And nowadays in many countries we don't talk about marriage as commitment. And this commitment is very important because when you have a commitment, you are responsible for what you do. If you can get out of a relation, get out of a marriage with no responsibility, then you are somehow promoting or you are sending the message that you can do whatever you want. That's what I was talking before about sometimes pre-family or post-family situations because there is not this commitment that makes mostly men accountable for what they do. Yeah. Second level is education. Okay. We need to teach children in an effective way that violence is never justified. And of course, this should start by violence at school, 
sometimes teachers are the perpetrators of violence and violence also within the family. Okay? Education can never come through violence. This is the message we have yeah. to send. And the third level would be public opinion. Uh, journalists, media, mm, how do we treat violence? How do we show young people? For instance, I could talk a lot about this, but if we think in those uh, TV shows or what we call series now, or you know, how, how is violence treated there? 